So we'll go one by one here. Let me uh, uh, take a pen and then do it. If you are making a note, please do make a note of it. It's worth it to remember. Although you'll be learning in anatomy a lot more, but in physiology also, we need to know what these laminas are. So we'll go with uh, the lamina number one first. So what is this lamina? So lamina one is actually a thin marginal layer and it has got neurons which are responding to pain. Okay, so it is actually a thin marginal layer which you see here, this one, and this is going to respond neurons which are going to respond to pain. What is important for us is the lamina 2, major part of the lamina 2 and little bit of lamina 3. So this is what is what we call as forms substantia gelatinosa. So this forms the area or you can say this lamina, major of uh, second lamina and little bit of third lamina, it forms the substantia gelatinosa. What is so important about substantia gelatinosa is because this is the area where the pain fibers come and terminate. So the pain, you know, we have the free nerve endings as the receptors and the sensory fibers, they come and terminate to substantia gelatinosa. And from here only the second order neurons will arise and they will cross over the spinal cord and ascend up. What is so important about substantia gelatinosa is the neurons which are here. After all, gray matter is the collection of cell neurons. These neurons are, they secrete a substance P. The neurons of the substantia gelatinosa, they secrete, they, it has been found that there is, they are very rich with substance P. The concentration of substance P is high. And substance P is actually a pain initiating modulator substance. You know, it's all a neurotransmitter which is involved in pain perception. Then let us go to nucleus uh, lamina number three and four. Okay. Three and four, we call it as nucleus proprius. What is nucleus proprius for? Nucleus proprius is it gets the fibers, input fibers, which is going to tell me about the proprioception and light touch. So they are basically involved for which type of sensation? Touch and proprioception. So touch and proprioception, the fibers which are bringing the touch and proprioception uh, sensations, they are going to go and go to these nucleus proprius. Then comes the lamina 5. This is the lamina 5. It is going to respond to both pain and visceral stimuli. Okay. So this responds to pain and visceral stimuli. Then comes the lamina 6. You can see here, this is the one which forms my lamina 6. This is the deepest layer in the dorsal horn. And it contains the neurons which respond to mechanical stimulus. So it is going to respond to mechanical signals, the one which are coming from my mechanoreceptors, they are going to come here and then they're going to ascend up. So they come to this lamina, lamina 6. Okay, so we have the mechanical signals coming from the skin to the lamina 6. Now come the lamina 7, see a larger part of it, a quite good amount of a you know, large zone we can say. So it contains... What is important is the dorsal nucleus or the Clark's column. See here, the dorsal nucleus, this, this, this is present here, the dorsal nucleus, okay, dorsal nucleus or otherwise we call this as Clark's, Clark's column. So Clark's column, uh, what does it do? The class column is the one which is actually involved in what? For, uh, they, they actually form the fibers for posterior spinocerebellar tract. So the fibers which are going from the spinal cord to the cerebellum, they form the spinocerebellar tract. And this class column, they are the one which are going to form my spinocerebellar tract. Okay. Then 
on the lateral intermedial you know look at this nucleus this in intermedial lateral nucleus the intermedial lateral nucleus which is uh, usually present in the upper lumbar region gives rise to they are actually giving rise to preganglionic preganglionic sympathetic fibers so we have the autonomic fibers coming from these lateral so we have it in the thoracic and the lumbar area we get this lateral horns and near to these lateral horns we have this nuclei what we call as the enteromedial nucleus which is again a part of the lamina 7 okay so that forms my preganglionic sympathetic fibers who arise from here they go to the ventral ram uh, root from the ventral root, they take up the white ramus, and from the right white ramus, they go to the sympathetic ganglion. Okay. Then comes the lamina number eight, eight and nine. So eight and nine are usually the motor neurons. They are actually the they contain the motor group of neurons which are present in the ventral horns. And then we have the area lamina number eight, which is close to the central canal okay which is close to the central canal so to repeat once again i think the major points which we should remember and it is worth it to remember that is lamina one it is for what it is it has got the thin margin which has got for the pain fibers what is important for us to remember is substantia gelatinosa lamina two and little bit of lamina three this forms a substantia gelatinosa. This is the part from where the afferent neurons will come. They'll give their second order neurons and these second order neurons is going to cross over and ascend up. Substantia gelatinosa neurons, they secrete or you can say the concentration of substance P has been found to be in a higher concentration here in this area. So substance P again is going to be the neurotransmitter which is going to modulate the pain. You know, it's going to have the pain sensation, going to transmit the pain sensations. Then comes the lamina number three and four. We should remember the nucleus proprius. What is this nucleus P? Proprius, proprioception. We should remember like this. Nucleus proprius is nucleus proprioception. So remember like that. So this is a part where, which is having the afferent nerves, which is bringing your touch and proprioception. Then comes the lamina five, five, which is going to respond to pain, pain and the viscera. So it is going to respond to the pain and the visceral pain, or you can say the visceral stimuli. Then comes the lamina six. Lamina six, it is going to respond to mechanical stimulus, which is coming from the skin area, okay, from the joints, from the skin, that is what is going to respond. Then we have to remember the dorsal nucleus, see a large area of it, you know, and it forms the Clark's column. Class forum is the one main contributor for the spinocerebellar tract. Remember in that way, posterior spinocerebellar tract. They're going to arise from here. Then comes the lamina, uh, the seventh, the inter, uh, intermedial lateral. So as I told you, the lateral horn cells, they're going to give rise to the preganglionic sympathetic fibers who are going to give rise to the preganglionic sympathetic fibers. They are going to go through the ventral ramus. Then they are going to go to the white rami and they'll go to the sympathetic ganglion. Okay. Then uh, that forms that. Okay. The ninth one, we can see here, the ninth is forming my ventral horn, which is basically for the motor neurons. So we have the motor fibers for the flexors and we have motor fibers for the extensors. And these all are present in the lamina nine and the lamina 10 is the one which is present around the central canal. 